So we're trying to get this to work out, right. but I think it goes Hey guys, way. have you heard of those new kind of robots? What robots? Like, tell me more. It's a new type of robot um, where you could be wearing just a glove and controlling a hand across the room by just moving your hand in the glove. How is that possible? Uh, they take, like, I made one of these flexible variable resistors. They take a whole bunch of them and um, put one on each finger uh, on the glove, and then when you move your hand, it somehow controls the robot. I made this one, but I really don't understand how it works. Sounds like something fun to do. Let's figure it out. Sounds good. The materials we use to make our flexible variable resistor are shown here. All of these materials can easily be found at your local hardware or craft stores. The recipe for making the resistor is 1.5 parts graphite powder, 1 part rubber cement. Acetone is used as needed for a solvent. Remember safety. Wear your goggles, gloves, and lab coat. Also, make sure this is done in a properly ventilated space. Once you have formed the shape of your resistor, allow it to set for 24 hours for it to cure. All right, so how do we think this works? Well, we know that graphite is a conductor and the rubber cement is an insulator, but what does that mean in that material? Well, I know when a beam of material is bent, the top, middle, and bottom portions all react differently. Maybe it's like a bunch of resistors or three resistors set in parallel. We know that when we connect resistors in parallel, the total resistance is less than that of the smallest resistor. This is given by the equation 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, where REQ is the equivalent or total resistance. Let's assume that our flat resistor acts as though there are three resistors in parallel. For simplicity, we'll assume a resistance of 10 ohms on each branch. This would make our equivalent resistance when the resistor is flat 3.33 ohms. Maybe when we bend our resistor, there is a different resistance at different points throughout the material. If we simplify this to consider the pathway through the middle of the resistor, the pathway near the top of the bend, and the pathway near the bottom of the bend, we would expect the resistance at the top to increase because we've stretched this part of the material, the resistance in the middle to be relatively unchanged, and the resistance near the bottom to be reduced due to the compression. If the section behaves like a parallel circuit, this would decrease the total resistance when the material is bent. Let's test our model. Here we have our flexible variable resistor connected to a multimeter set at 2000 ohms. Aw oh man, we can see that the resistance actually increases when we bend the resistor. This is the opposite of what our model predicted. I guess it's time to create a new model. So we need a new model where resistance goes up when the resistor is bent. Well, let's think of things that affect resistance. Uh, temperature can affect resistance. Can. Uh, but I guess the temperature is really staying the same, so that probably isn't affecting it for this. That's true. When I think of resistance, I'm thinking R equals rho L over A. Do you think that could play a factor? It's possible. That might be it. Let's try it. Let's consider this formula. Resistance equals rho L over A, or resistivity times length divided by the cross-sectional area. Resistivity is a property of the material, so let's assume we can hold this constant. We also know that the length is not changing because sparks are not formed between the ends of the resistor when bent. But what about the cross-sectional area? Let's assume graphite is evenly distributed so that electrons can move throughout the whole cross-sectional area of the flat resistor. However, when we bend the resistor, we can imagine we will break some of these connections between graphite particles near the top of the bend. This would mean that electrons can now only move through the bottom section of the resistor. If that's true, we would have effectively reduced the cross-sectional area, which our formula tells us should increase our resistance. Let's view our resistor again. As before, the resistance increases when the material is bent. If our model is accurate, we should also see an increase in resistance when the material is compressed by pushing on it. Let's see what happens. So let's give this resistor a good push. Aha! We see an increase in resistance. 
I've also heard about a type of robot where when the glove is put on and sign language is done with the glove, that the sign language is converted into speech so that people who can't speak can talk to other people. That's really cool. What a neat way to blend science and technology. Yeah, I mean, and we have a working model for the device.